Well, here we are, standing on my front step, and uh, you can see that it's it's winter. This is the kind of day that makes being Canadian worthwhile. <laughs> yeah, it's really neat. Not such a good day for shooting, perhaps. So I think what I'll do is uh, I'll go and make a movie, and you can see. All the snow, it's wonderful. Canada is a great country. I love it. <laughs> Anyhow, I'll talk to you later. Well, welcome aboard, my friends. We have a excruciatingly cold day happening. So we'll hang out here in the armory and discuss archery. My friend Gustavo and the Stone Cold Sweet have asked me to go over our ancestors' pre-Viking bow, the Holmgard bow. So that's what we're going to do today and discuss a few matters of archery. <laughs> Welcome aboard, as I say. Now, let's get rid of this. This is the home guard bow. This is a pre-Viking bow. We were using bows for oh, at least 10,000 years. They're finding them. It's a flat bow made out of Osage Orange. It's a pyramid bow, it tapers evenly to the hand grip. I, uh, I like this bow quite a bit and I'm glad that you've asked me to show it to you again so we're going to do some shooting now and uh, check this out but I think you are able to see it okay aren't you okay so that's what we'll do okay now I'll be back in a minute Well, my friends, something that's been pointed out to me a few times is that I'm I'm too old, I'm overbowed, I'm too weak, uh, just a lot of stuff. I'm surprised I can even stand up. Uh, something that is noted, though, is that you shake too much. You know, this comes up over and over again. You shake too much, or people will say, I shake too much, you know. Well, the truth is, Shaking is perfectly okay and completely normal. For instance, if you're carefully anchoring to a certain spot, your muscles correct by doing that. So that's just natural shaking. Um, also, I'm going to put on my Viking glasses. Yeah, Viking side glasses, it's true. See this book? Archery. It's Theory and Practice by Horace A. Ford. Now you can see it's kind of worn and it's obviously been looked at a, a lot of times. Uh, just inside here, uh, um, a Colonel Fisher was Horace Ford's friend and he wrote about Horace and I'm just going to read part of it. It says, the gaze fixed on the target, the long continuous draw till four inches alone remained undrawn of the arrow, four inches. The pause then for the aim which he ever conceived declared and illustrated by splendid results to be the correct method of aiming. Now he says, the left arm rigid as steel but most singularly, the right hand and fingers trembled. Right hand and fingers trembled many times to and fro under the strain, neither smart nor quick nor smooth his loose at last came off. And then he repeats down here and he writes again, distinctly hindered by the tremor of the strain 
but it was finally done. You see, Horace Ford was a great archer. And when he would come to draw, and he shot a 50-pound bow, when he came to draw, there was a tremor. It shook. And also, in his style, you see, he would stop four inches in front, and that's where he would line up. Well, if you stop four inches in front, and now you pause, when you start to pull 50 pounds again, yeah, there's a tremor. It's perfectly okay. It's perfectly okay to have a tremor as you're bringing things in. Now, if you are carefully drawing, you can get this tremor. But I'll tell you, if you draw right to your anchor quickly, you don't have that same kind of shape. But when you bring it in, it will shake more. Okay? Quicker, no shake, careful, a little more tremor. Anyhow, that's just a little something I thought I'd uh, let you know. So don't be too embarrassed uh, if you shake a bit. The left doesn't want to be shaken. This is okay. This is the anchor. It moves. Okay? Anyhow, be back in a minute. Well, my friends, there's something I like about this bow. See how it follows the grain so it curves this way? It's got bumps and lumps and all kinds of natural tree things. Today I'm going to show you something different. We are, lately, you know, I, I've been showing you how to draw to a specific spot parallel to the distance with your eye. Well, we're not doing that today. We're just going to draw it right back until my hand is by my ear, my fingers are just behind my jaw. Just a full draw. The uh, main thing that we can do, or do is to control the cant and the arrow with our elbow by rolling it. Now I'll show you what I mean. Again, we are not going to anchor. Our ancestors, when they were drawing back to here, were not anchoring. This is a more modern, contrived target style. Folks think that you have to anchor though. You know, oh, you have to. Anchoring is one of the main causes of missing because people twist the power line when they try to move to this specific spot. But as you can see, if I'm touching the corner of my mouth, the corner of my mouth is over there, the corner of my mouth is over there. It's not the same spot. The finger is there, yes, but it's not the same spot in relation to my eye. Now, what I'm really doing is I'm pushing and rolling the arrow on, but I'm not trying to roll the arrow on with the push. What's controlling the roll is my elbow. As my elbow goes down, that bow will roll on, or that arrow will roll on, and when I get it straight, I just come straight back. I come straight back and relax, and I let my eye float not as much as this, but it's floating. It's not touching. I'm feeling the pressure towards that target. I can feel it. When it feels like it's pointing where I'm looking, that's when I let go. Now, here's the thing. I'm looking through the trough. Remember the trough, that little... So, all I'm going to do is look through the trough and to get it straight I'm going to do that and do this so watch how straight and quick was that let's just do it again look I'm looking through the trough right the arrow I guess is pointing off to the side a little bit and I'm going to allow the pressure in the bow to straighten everything out so watch how straight is that? Watch. I don't have to anchor. I just pull back and I get it straight like that. And again, when it goes straight, now you see, that's crooked, that's crooked, 
That's straight. I'm not touching anything, and I can see it's perfectly straight. Okay? So that's what we want to do. Look through the trough. Get it straight. And now all i got to do, bang, right in there. Okay? Anyhow, I'll be back in a minute. You can think that over for a second. <laughs> okay. Well, my friends, have you met my friend Bill? Of course, it's uh, too tall to get in the camera. Well, I'll just tilt it down a bit. Now, this is the Bill Hook, uh, a very, very handy English weapon. Of course, it's called the Bill because it has a bill just like a, a beak. And it's a spear and it's a hook. It also extends your reach, oh, you know, out about eight feet. Whacka! Yeah, so this is my friend Bill. Always thinking of you. <laughs> Anyhow, I just thought you might find that a little bit entertaining. I'll be back in a minute. Well, there certainly is more than one way to shoot. So, again, this time, for now, we're going to look through the trough. We're not going to do the parallel. We're going to look through the trough, okay? And we're simply going to roll like this. Okay? And then I'll show you the other way in a minute, because, you know, it's a cold day and we're fooling around. <laughs> so, but uh, that's what we'll do. So this has a lot to do with the pull. Now, if you can notice, right in there, no follow through, no touching the face, just feeling the pressure. No anchor. The head is actually above the arrow and looking along the pressure line. So it's just stretch it out, you see? That's all you got to do. Anyhow, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, my friends. Now, something that I want you to realize is that as we draw, if you watch my elbow, as my elbow goes back, you see how it goes down? Step a little forward. Can you see that? As my elbow goes back, it will go down. If I hold my arm way up here, it will go down. If I hold it at mouth level, it will go down. If I hold it down here, when it gets back, it goes down. So what I'm going to suggest is that when you draw, keep your hand up about your anchor height, okay? So, instead of drawing like this, or, <laughs> or like this, what we'll do is keep it about mouth level, anchor level. And when it comes back, it sort of sits down about the right height. Also, when your arm is up a little bit higher, it's easier for you to transfer the pressure. That's extremely important, to transfer the pressure from the elbow to the hand. So it will come back and then relax, and now you press forward again. Okay, so it's back, let it settle in, put the pressure forward. Okay, anyhow, that's uh, something that's uh, important. Is the height of your elbow and drawing to your mouth. Well, guys, in this style, it's all about the the pull, pulling and bringing the elbow down. But it's pulled; the left doesn't point; it just gets pulled into position. Again, I'll try to show you, you know. But it's like it's going to pull. And it 
it's not going to be anchored on the face. The head's going to be above it. I just have to get it back, get the pressure line relaxed into position, and look where it's pointing. So pull it on. Now when it gets back here, you just relax your arm, okay? Bang. Got her. You know, just this is a very simple way of shooting and uh, for shorter distances uh, it's not bad and maybe for longer distances too, you know? There is no real way. Ken, Ken Wilhelm, he had a, a, a bad arm and he couldn't draw to his face like most guys, so he used to shoot from down at his waist and he was extremely accurate. You don't have to, uh, you know, anchor on the face. That's just a modern myth. So you just get it there and let her go. Doing this, you know, we can immediately switch to our other style too, where we anchor here. And that is, if we want, we can certainly just put the arrow slightly to the right, get the hand up the height of the, the mouth, and do the parallel draw. So it's very easy to switch from one style to the other. Parallel draw, you know, just look at the target, put it on the right, draw. No, this time though, bang, dead center. This time, you know, we're actually using an anchor in that style. Right? But so there's the two styles. Uh, they both work, and uh, they're a lot of fun, you know. So anyhow, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye now. Now, my friends, uh, so the main difference between the parallel draw or the roll is with the parallel draw we do not roll the elbow the elbow comes back about mouth height but with the roll we actually see that the arm pulls the other the bow on so the elbow is moving so again parallel draw it will just come back both systems work but uh, basically we'll look at the target get our hand up as high as our mouth and we'll get it looking parallel to our eye so okay now, it will come back like that and just relax, dead center. Uh, now, another thing with this draw where we roll, we can also anchor. But what we're doing is pulling it past that anchor to get more power, okay? But uh, the roll also would be looking at the trough and uh, and again the hand at the height of the, of the mouth and simply push and pull it straight and then just sort of um, what can I say aim it <laughs> line it up and aim it so it's it can be anchored near the mouth okay so again pull it on and just get it and you know get it so it's looking straight or what we'll do, just to get some extra power, we're going to roll it and pull it farther, that's all. So it's just going to be pull. Now you see, it's way back here. Now it can still be close to the face, but it's back farther. And my armor is starting to hook my string. But anyhow, that's all you got to do.
pull it on, get it up close, line it up, and let her go. Okay? Anyhow. That's a couple of choices there for you. Okay, back in a minute. Well, my friends, now, combining this roll draw, and remember, it's the elbow pushing on that bow that makes it curve. But using that technique, and if I combine it with the magic place, the magic spot, just right there by my lower back tooth, I do get more accuracy than if I just pull it back to my ear and let go. It is more consistent. The, uh, the beauty of it, though, is that the arm pulls it on, and it forces you to put pressure on that bow, because the pressure in the bow is what makes it shoot straight. So if, if you're forced to draw it and pull it back, you've got power into that bow, and uh, it will just shoot better anyhow. But, uh, yeah, I find that the, uh, the, the roll draw, the tip can be on the right or right on the target or off to the left a little bit. It doesn't matter because you're d drawing visually. As your arm reaches the right spot, you just stop rolling it, and it's straight. So no matter what angle it is, it will go straight to your eye because of the pressure. That's a big deal. So, what we do now is just sort of get it right there, let it hang, and bang. It's a very accurate way to shoot. Hauling it back and getting over it. Oh, I'm hitting my jacket again. But anyhow, uh, it's good, just not as good. And of course, they're doing the parallel draw also. With the parallel draw, you know, you let the tip go on, and then you bring the back on. So these little steps, little procedures. And I'm not sure which one I like more, to tell you the truth. You know, they both work. Look at the target, pull it back, relax. Let it go back there. Now just lower it. Bang! Dead center. Or, again, start to the right. Don't roll your elbow. And it doesn't have to be a long way to the right, you know, but it will just move over as you squeeze. And when it gets into the right spot, relax your arm. And, phew, same spot. So, uh we have these choices as long as you know about them. The advantage of this one is you can get power into that bow. It shoots very, very accurately. The advantage of this one is simply that <laughs> it works great. And in both cases, you leave your hand open so that the bow naturally finds its own spot. With this one, you leave it open, it finds its own spot. But in all honesty, with the bending of the elbow, the elbow is making the spot, you see? Slight differences. Anyhow, think that stuff over. Fun. Well, guys, the other day I had a fella, and uh, he was telling me that his middle finger had been numb for three weeks. And uh, he thought that he could shoot without a glove, but obviously he couldn't. When I was a, a boy, my mother bought me a BB gun and a bow and arrow when I was seven years old, and it had a glove or it had a tab and uh, an arm guard. I didn't know what it was, my mother didn't know what it was, so I went out in the backyard, I started shooting the bow, and I fairly quickly actually got water blisters on my fingers, water blisters and a bruise. And you know, I never shot that bow again for about four years, I just kept shooting my BB gun, forget it. So I tell people, protect your fingers, protect your arms, you'll be okay. Anyhow. There's a couple of kinds of gloves. Uh, this is one kind of glove you can see on my bow hand. Why do I wear a glove there? Do you see this feather right through this glove? So I was wearing this glove one day and the feather hooked, because it was badly worn, but it hooked and went right in. Now it went right through, but it never touched me. If that had gone in my finger, 
I would have been in trouble. Okay? So gloves are really good. And uh, another thing that I want you to do with your arrows if you're shooting off your hand is take something like, uh, uh, pretend that's sandpaper, but you take something like this and you sand the end of the feathers so that they're smooth and uh, there's less damage to your hand, okay? Uh, but now, as far as gloves, and there are gloves, these are Damascus gloves, and there are tabs. Let's just explain this a bit. Now, a Damascus glove is a three-fingered glove, and it will fit on your right hand or your left hand, and they're shaped like this. There's many of them. There's, here's one made out of leather. Um, here's another one made out of leather, slightly different. The thing about gloves and tabs is they have to be thick enough, thick enough, so that you don't feel the string. This business of wanting to feel the string, you hear a guy say that, it's nonsense. You don't want to feel the string. You just want that string to slide off your fingers. So if you have a, uh, a glove like this type of Damascus glove, it, it's really thin kid uh, leather. You know, if you're shooting a bow more than 25 or 30 pounds with this on, it's digging into your fingers. It's worthwhile getting a glove that has a little bit of leather on it. Or in my case, see my glove? Now, this is my glove. You'll see that it has cordova on it. It's very hard leather. Very hard. I don't feel the string. Okay? So the thicker the leather, the harder the leather the better for you. But uh, this is the style of glove that I use. Now, our ancestors couldn't afford to have a glove made, so they would go and get a piece of leather and just cut out a piece of leather so that it fit their fingers and they would have a tab. Okay? So that's what our ancestors used. I find tabs like this that have little parts on them where it separates your fingers just all nonsense. You don't need things to... I mean, how stupid are we? Oh, this will keep your fingers open. Anyhow, people like this kind of stuff, and they'll put thumb uh, rests on it, you know, so that they push on it with their thumb. It just throws them off. Foolishness. But anyhow, this is one style. This is a pretty good style here. And uh, the thing that I notice is that, see, it has three layers of leather? Well, that uh, those three leathers separate the parts so that the heat is dissipated. It doesn't go through one piece. Uh, you can get uh, even more fancy ones of the same style. This is very thick leather, very good one. I, I used one like this uh, for a few years. But then again, I used one like this for a few years. So anyhow, that's what I'm saying is that you want to protect your hands and your forearm, or you're going to hurt yourself, strain your fingers, and quit. Invest in a decent pair of gloves, a decent tab, a decent arm guard. It'll take you a long way. It really will. Anyhow, that's about all I had to say for today. So, uh, okay, I'll talk to you later. Well, Gustavo and Stone Cold Sweden, I hope you enjoyed our little sojourn into our pre-Viking Danish bow. And to all my Viking friends, smooth sailing. <laughs> I'll talk to you later, boys.